today, of course, is Eid al-Adha. And usually we, could, we would be able to talk about the millions of people who went for Hajj. But of course, this year is very different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us gifts. And if we are not thankful for those gifts, He takes them away. And for the believer, the taking away of the gift is a lesson. Because the believer is someone who is in intelligent and learns from that lesson and realizes his mistake and comes back to Allah. Everything Allah subhanahu wa has given us is a gift. The greatest gift that He has given us is His Habib, His Beloved, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And everything connected to His Beloved, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And if we do not honor and respect these gifts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of any of us. We are the ones who are in need of Him. It's ironic and sad at the same time that in essence the Hajj was cancelled because of the fear of sickness. You know, Hajj has been or Hajj has not happened in years past because of invading armies or wars but never because of the fear of sickness which is also ironic because the same people who said no we can't have the Hajj are the ones who allowed Vogue magazine to come and do a photo shoot of half naked uh, women 200 miles north of Medina Munawwara I guess somehow they could not get the disease or spread the disease. But anyone coming for Hajj, and Hajj is something that in some places people put their name in the pot when they're born. Their parents put it in the pot when they're born and when they're 40 or 50 or 60 years old, finally their name comes out. And for all of those people this year, no Hajj. This Eid is Eid al Muslimin. You know, we have two Eids that are Eid al Muslimin, Eid of the Muslims. Juma is Eid al Mu'mineen, Eid of the believers. And of course, the coming of Rasulullah is Eid al Muhsineen. But the Eids are not independent of each other, they are connected. The lessons that we are to learn from them are the same. You know, the Eid al-Fitr or the Eid of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Baqarah, when He obligates the fasting, He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. That all you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you, for, the, for you as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may learn taqwa. And when we think about Eid al-Adha, we all think about sacrifice. You know, the, we think about the animal sacrifice. And yet in the Quran, in Surah Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after saying that it is not the meat or the blood that reaches him, he says, وَلَكِنْ يَتَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ But it is the, but it is your taqwa that reaches him. Taqwa is something that various people define in various ways. You know, simple translation would be piety or righteousness. But as in everything, you have a superficial level, and then you have that which is deep. You know, you have the apparent, and then you have the reality. You know, if someone makes salat, and they pray, and they, they fast, and they do all of these things, everybody says, oh, he has taqwa, he is righteous. You know, he's truthful and all of these things. Yet the heart may be devoid. The reality of anything in Islam that matters is what is in the heart. If it is not in the heart, then it has no meaning. You know, even when we say the kalma, if we're not saying it from the heart, then we have not entered Islam. And in the, in the hereafter, that is the only thing that will matter. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he mentions taqwa he also defines what taqwa of the heart is in the Quran itself and again in Surah Hajj he says ذَلِكُ وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكُ وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرُ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ and whosoever honors his sha'ar, his signs, then he has taqwa of the heart. His righteousness is of the heart. So now the question is, what, is, what are the signs of Allah? And in reality, all of creation is a sign of Allah. But there are certain signs that He expounds upon or certain signs that he points towards you know a sign a sign is anything that reminds you of something else you know like a stop sign or a red light you know it reminds you that I need to stop here when the right light goes green then you know okay I need to go so it tells you what to do it gives you a sign it, it indicates what you need to do or it points towards something so all of creation points towards the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when he talks about his signs in the Quran, he specifies them. In Surah Baqarah, he also says, Inna safa wal marwata min sha'airillah. That indeed Safa and Marwa are the signs of Allah. What are Safa and Marwa? two small hills in Mecca, close to the Kaaba. Hmm? But what is significant about them that they are, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them specifically in the Quran as His signs. Other than the, the mother of Ismail al Islam, Bibi Hajar, she ran between these two places out of the love of her son. It was not just any son. This son is a prophet. And not just any prophet. This son is carrying in him the nur of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He is the forefather to the beloved of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So when we're reminded of her running it reminds us of who? Of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is the greatest sign of Allah that when we see him we are reminded of his creator and when we see his perfection it shows us that if this creation cannot be the creator then how much more perfect is the creator himself he also says Allah SWT says in Surah Hajj again he says wal budna ja'alnaha lakum min sha'airillahi lakum fiha khair budn are the animals for sacrifice these are the animals that have been selected to be sacrificed in the way of Allah on Eid. Mm -hmm. And so Allah SWT says that these budin, this cattle, mm -hmm. that otherwise no one even pays attention to. But now because they have been selected for a spe specific task, He says that they are from the signs of Allah. and in them is good for you so now when this animal which was just a regular goat or a regular sheep or just any cow has now been selected to be sacrificed in the way of Allah now Allah SWT says what? He says honor and respect this animal why? because it is his sign it reminds us of the sacrifice of Ibrahim salam, who reminds us of what? The sacrifice of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He mentioned, as I mentioned before, about the taqwa of the heart But he simply mentions this at taqwa of the heart You know, it's like saying somebody, you know, has, has passed a certain course 
But simply saying it and certifying it are two different things. You know, if a university says that, oh, he passed, it has one meaning, but then they give you a piece of paper that certifies that you have passed. And now, now you can go anywhere and show that piece of paper, <coughs> and that is proof of your passing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, He gives us proof of, of taqwa as well, the taqwa of the heart. And He mentions this in the Quran, in Surah Adab, Surah Hujrat, Surah number 49. After warning us of not disrespect, disrespecting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And saying that if we do that, that He will wipe away our deeds and we won't even realize it. أَن تَحْبَتَ أَعْمَالِكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَغُدُّونَ أَسْوَاتَهُمْ إِنْ دَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُولَائِكَ الَّذِينَ نَمْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَى And indeed, you know, without a doubt, those who lower their voices before the Messenger ﷺ And here, lowering, lowering the voice doesn't simply mean talking silently or, or in a low voice. It's talking about humbling yourself those who humble themselves before the Messenger He says that these are the people whom Allah Taala, whose hearts Allah Taala has tested whose hearts He has certified with taqwa and for them is forgiveness and a great reward so the greatest gift the greatest sign of Allah is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. And if we do not honor and respect him, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will take away our Iman. And we see that today. And taking the way Iman doesn't simply mean becoming a, a openly becoming a disbeliever. Yeah. We see people who still say the Kalma La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Yet they consider Rasulullah so some, someone like themselves. They talk about him like they talk about themselves and they, they, they think about him like they think about themselves. And this is a form of Iman that is gone and the person doesn't even realize it. He still quotes verses from the Quran and, and Hadith and yet there is no Iman. You know, these same people who canceled the Hajj and yet allowed the, the magazine shoot are the same people who, who propagate this ideology. You know, ideology and politics are connected. You cannot separate them like people try to today. That they don't agree with the politics but they go along with the ideology. The ideology that, that makes you think that Rasulullah is like yourself is an ideology that, that, is, that leads us to destruction and brings upon us the wrath of Allah. And so we need to protect ourselves and our children from this type of ideology and all the other ideologies that are going around in the world nowadays. You know, from poisoning ourselves first and then those around us. And when we remember this sacrifice, we cannot forget the sacrifice of, of Imam Hussein al-Islam in the field of Karbala. Because if you read the verses of, it, of uh, uh, Surah Safa, Surah number 37, where Allah SWT talks about the sacrifice of Ibrahim al-Islam, when he says, and we ransomed him with a great ransom. <coughs> and then he says, <coughs> And we postpone this ransom for later generations. And the only thing that is indicating is the sacrifice of Imam Hussein al-Islam in the field of Karbala to give life to the tree of Islam. And if we don't know him and don't know about him, then again we are not honoring the gift of Allah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to honor his gifts to honor his signs and to uh, so that he can be so that we can be grateful to him 
and that he may fill our hearts with his Iman.